So if I had a friend come to me and say, I want to install Isaac Sim fast and simple, I would say, this is what's worked for me. And these would probably be the questions my friend would have. Windows or Ubuntu, and if Ubuntu, which version of Ubuntu? For the NVIDIA drivers, which NVIDIA driver? There are so many to choose from. And lastly, which version of the IsaacSim installation? Workstation, container, cloud deployment, Python environment installation, there are a lot to choose from. And lastly, IsaacSim 4.5 or IsaacSim 5.0. And here are my answers to those questions. Ubuntu 2204, Jamie Jellyfish. As for the drivers, don't worry about trying to find the driver yourself. Let the Ubuntu installer find the recommended one and install it for you. And as far as which installation type, we will go with the pip installation and we won't have to choose between 4.5 and 5. We will install both on the same machine. And lastly, if you have an empty drive, obviously you'll do your installation onto that. But if you are running Windows and you want to be able to use your Windows machine, I'll show you how to partition your drive to create space to install Ubuntu onto that same machine. So let's jump right in. So on Windows, let's go into disk management and we will see we have got one large drive there I've got a full terabyte drive and I'm going to pretty much split that in half so I'm going to go to shrink volume and shrink it by about half and push OK and now I've got almost 500 gigs of unallocated space all right so now let us go and install for uh, Ubuntu desktop installer we're going to go to Ubuntu download Ubuntu image and download Ubuntu desktop and check out our alternative downloads because we don't want the very latest one. We want Jamie Jellyfish. There we go, 2204. And let us scroll down and find the ISO. There we go, there's the ISO. Let's go ahead and click on it and download it. Now I'm gonna use Belina Etcher to create my USB drive to boot into. So super simple. We just go in there and we select, firstly, which file we're gonna be uh, flashing and that's the one we just downloaded. And in the middle is the target, so we'll just select our USB drive or external drive and we click flash and it takes a matter of minutes. Now on my Windows machine, I'll show you another alternative called Rufus, which is pretty much the same thing with a few more options. You'll just select your device and you'll select the ISO that you've downloaded and click start and it will create you a flash in just a matter of minutes as well. Okay, once we've done that, then we're going to reboot our machine and we're going to go into the BIOS by pushing F2. And once we're in there, we're going to find the drive that we wrote the ISO to. And we will just move that to the top as the boot priority. So it boots into that installer. All right, we push F10 and save and reboot again. We'll select try or install Ubuntu. And there we go. We have our Ubuntu installer. We'll click on install Ubuntu. And now here's the important screen. You're going to check on this third option so that Ubuntu will find the correct NVIDIA drivers and install them for you. Now, if you've got a fresh empty drive, you will go ahead and select Erase Disk and install Ubuntu. If you've done a partition, in which case it will be something else, and we will go there and find our free space. And we will create a partition. and set the mount point and go ahead and install now and one last confirmation there we go all right select our region and set a username and password and the installation is going all right we need to restart and now we are into our brand new Ubuntu setup. Okay, and with that out the way, let's have a look at what NVIDIA driver has been installed. So if we type in NVIDIA SMI, we see it's put in 570.133.07 and CUDA 12.8. So let's just do a quick sanity check. If we do a manual search for my RTX 3090, the most recent driver it finds 570.153.02, but what it's actually installed is 570.133.07, which is within three months of the time of recording. So it is a pretty new driver and it makes sense why that one was chosen. 
All right, so let's continue with our installation and we are gonna go and search for the installation for Isaac Lab and we're gonna choose the PIP installation. And we first have to check GLIBC, what version we've got running. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and copy LDD version and put that in and we've got 2.35, which satisfies, I think they want 2.34 plus. Okay, so next step now, scroll down and we're gonna get Miniconda installed. So let's go ahead and click on that and go through and look at the installation instructions and we want to find the Ubuntu one and let's just W get that. And once that's downloaded, let's do the installation. All right. And lastly, let's source our bash file. Okay, and let's see the version of Conda running. Perfect, it is installed. All right, so let's get back to our Isaac Sim installation and let's go ahead and create our Conda environment. So let's copy the command and it'll just default to NV Isaac Lab, which is fine, or you can rename it to anything else you want. And once that's done, then we can activate the environment. Okay, and once it's activated, we can see it's changed from base to showing our environment on the left there of the prompt. Okay, let's just create a little bit of space. Okay, and now we will go ahead and upgrade our version of PIP. And after that, we're gonna be ready to do the actual installation. So let's go copy that installation command, paste that in, and let it do its thing. So it's gonna take about five to 10 minutes. I'm gonna speed through that. Great, and let's see if Isaac Sim runs. So let's type in or copy and paste Isaac Sim. Now we're gonna have a few problems along the way and I am gonna take you through them just so you can see what you might expect yourself. So I'm not fast forwarding through to just the first time it works. I'll show you all the problems I had along the way. So we can see it's loading for the first time. And just as it's about to finish, it uh, crashes. And I'm making a note there that it crashed four times at the point of this recording. So rather than show you that four times, just letting you know it did crash four times, I have rebooted my machine and I've run it again. And uh, Looks like we've got a little bit further this way. It does say app is ready at the top. Okay, it's crashed again. Just be patient. We're almost there. And it is loading again. Let's see if we're going to get a little bit further. Nope. All right, one more time. Okay, there we go. Isaacson app is fully loaded. And let's open that up and let's see if we can load some scenes. So let's start with the physics examples and let's go to a very simple one, box on the table. And it loads and let's see if it runs. There we go, it does. Let's go a little bit more complex than that. Okay, two boxes on a table and that does run. Okay, let's go to one of our complex showcases and chair stacking. And the chair stacking runs just fine. Okay, that is fantastic. Just keep in mind that for large scenes like the chair stacking, it can take a few minutes to load the first time. Okay, so let's carry on with our installation, moving on to Isaac Lab. Let us go ahead and clone the repo. And once that's downloaded, let's just install dependency using the sudo apt install cmake build essential. And now we can run the install command. Oh, sorry, first, let's just make sure we go and activate our Conda environment again. And CD into our Isaac Lab directory and run the install. Okay, 
and let's go ahead now and try run one of these sample files. So this is just to create empty. This should open up Isaac Sim and create an empty scene. Okay, and that crashed. Uh, we can have a few little um, experiences where we crashes a few times. I did turn off my machine and restart it. And now let us see if it runs again once I've rebooted. And there we go, setup complete. So it means it ran that file. So let's make things a little bit more complicated and let's move on to a slightly more complex file. So we've got another one called spawn prims. And if we go and we look into the Isaac Lab folder under scripts and tutorials, we can see there's some nice tutorials already there and there's a file there called spawn prims. And that'll open up the basic scene and it'll actually create us a few prims. And let's see if this one loads first time. Okay, no, it doesn't. And let's try again. Okay, it's crashed again. And let's try a third time, maybe lucky. And there we go. Our prims have spawned and we can see Isaac Lab is working nicely. Now we're going to go ahead and install Isaac Sim 5.0. So you can go ahead and navigate to that on GitHub. And you can see that is the 5.0 release. One thing to mention, it is a pre-release of 5.0. So it is currently in development and there may be some issues with it. So we're going to do a few things here to get started with. We are going to um, install Build Essential. And then we are going to clone the repo, CD into it. And then we will build. And then once it's built, it will take quite a while. Then we will CD into the folder and run the executable file. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we'll start off by cloning the repository. And next we will CD into the Isaacson folder. And we mustn't forget to sudo apt um, install build essentials. I'm just showing you a little bit of a history here. I got it to work eventually, but if we see there was an error, the first time I tried to build, and that's because at the top um, I did build without the build essentials, and then I came down and I, um, yeah, I got that error. Then I ran the uh, install build essential, and then when I ran the build script again, it uh, worked properly, and you see at the bottom here I get a success. So just don't forget to run the build essential. All right, so let's cd into the release folder and let us then run Isaac Sim. And again, we'll have one or two little issues running like we did with 4.5 where it will um, crash, but we will get through that. So here we're running it for the first time and it says app ready. And then it crashes and we're going to do that one more time. There we go. It works a second time and the app is loaded. Let's go in there and we can see that's 5.0 running at the top there. And let's run a box on a table. And... There we go, it loads and it runs and let's move on to something a bit more complex. Chair stacking, that is running fine. I keep in mind I fast forwarded, it does take a bit longer to load, especially this one. And here we have the most complex one uh, of these three, uh, the Franca brick stacking. I just um, love watching this robot pick up the Lego blocks and stack them. Really, really pretty. All right, so we've got 5.0 running. And just to end off, I mainly use 4.5 for now because 5.0 is pre-release. Expect Isaac Sim to crash. You just get used to it and it's really fine. So this is the order priority, what I do. I will restart Isaac Sim if it crashes. If that doesn't work a few times, I will reboot my machine. And if that doesn't work, I just sleep on it miraculously and I have no explanation for it. But if I've rebooted multiple times and cannot get it to work, I come in the next day and often the first time I started, it just works. So no explanation. Perhaps there's some cache files that um, expire after 12 hours or something and then the new ones get downloaded or created. But I do know that if it doesn't work, I just leave it, come back a few hours later or the next day and it always just works. And lastly, just to remind you for Isaac Sim 4.5, don't forget to activate your Conda environment. One other thing I'd like to mention is I upgraded from an RTX 3080 to 3090. Uh, midway in uh, learning Isaac Sim, so that's over the last couple of months, and I do notice that 
With the 3090, I'm now able to load scenes like that Franco brick stacking that my 3080 just wouldn't load it. It also really struggled with the full warehouse scene. So you might find that depending on which card you're using, some of the larger scenes may cause Isaac Sim to crash, whereas it works fine for some of the simpler things. But while I had my 3080, most of what I needed to do was quite fine on Isaac Sim. It was just the really large scenes that gave me a problem. Just thought it was worth mentioning in case you're experiencing the same thing. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking or subscribing. Thanks for watching.